Welcome everybody to In The Stiffs with me, Sam Mason, my friend and Brackley manager, Gavin Cowan, and Housewives favourite, Dave Edwards. Woo-hoo! Four weeks ago, we said it's the last time we're ever going to use StreamYard. Three weeks ago, we said it's the last time. Two weeks ago, we said it's definitely the last time. A week ago, I said 100% we were meeting in person. When I first embarked on management, I actually thought, well, I'm not playing, am I? So I can have a couple of beers. And obviously, he didn't go silly, maybe four or five, six or seven or eight. He was saying, like, and I quote, he's got a game tomorrow, Aid. <laughs> They're like that, the Welsh, though, aren't they? Yeah, they are, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, you're welcome, lads. Yeah. You win, I've got your win bonuses, sort of, yeah. Go and, get, go and treat your wife to some a handbag over the weekend. You're welcome. On Silv, on Big Silv, that is funny funny characters like in the dressing room he's one of the funniest like, i've met mate he was a he was a great laugh but he knew how important he was he knew how good he was and he would just kind of play it perfectly you don't you don't score 30 40 50 goals in, in the conference if you if you're not able to step up like, I, like, step. I, I took all this time after the game on the coach because i was so buzzing and then sam just put head up question mark and i just put yeah it's like it's like when the word furloughs after COVID and everything just appeared, like no one ever heard the word and that's all you hear then for the next six months. It's like all we've been talking about the stream yard is this little duck in the corner, isn't it? Which Welcome everybody to another episode of In the Stiffs. We've started recording. Unfortunately, we're on StreamYard again, lads. What's happened there? Like, why are we on StreamYard? Like, I thought we were gonna meet up. We promised all the listeners that um Four weeks ago, we said it's the last time we're ever going to use StreamYard. Three weeks ago, we said it's the last time. Two weeks ago, we said it's definitely the last time. A week ago, I said 100% we were meeting in person. Yes, so we are last again time. on StreamYard. Will, this will be the last time. I, I've never used the word StreamYard as much in my life as I have in the last month. Yeah. After the last episode, oh, sorry. Turn the phones off. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sake. Can we be professional? Like, Gav's, Gav's drinking the coffee on screen. Dave's phone's going off. Um, is, is there only me again? I've rushed back from work. I've literally got back four minutes ago. I haven't eaten. And like I'm still looking more professional. Hold on, hold on. I've just got to the ground here. I've just got to the ground, cleared everyone out of the, out of the way, got in my office. I'm like, I've, I've been brought a cup of tea. What can you do? Just... <laughs> Go on, sorry, Dave, uh, what you were saying. Yeah, I was going to say, you're talking about can we not organise not to be on StreamYard. At the end of the last episode, we said, right then, when are we going to meet? And you said to us, Sam, that I cannot do any day next week. So this one's down <laughs> to you. Yeah, and I'll remember that. <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah, yeah, but I, did, I said <laughs> yeah, I can't but... do any day, but obviously, like, there was other options. <laughs> 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 one more yeah. time on StreamYard. One more time. Last well, after time. this. Yeah, and then we'll and then we'll have one more, and then we'll definitely not. Go on. <laughs> yeah, that's like so when me when me and Gav meet up for a drink, and we say we'll meet up for a pint, and then we then we'll go. Are we having any more? We we'll go. Come on, we'll have one more, and then Gav, I'll say to Gav, do you, "Is that it, Gav? Are you finished? You want, do you want another one more?" And he goes, "Go on, then." I mean, I we need to go home, but go on. What I'll do is I'll just have one more after the next one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, and you know what? It's brilliant. We laugh every time. Yeah, so. oh, yeah, so it's funny. Yeah, but it's like, not, and, fix it. and then we go home, and our wives are like, I thought you were only going for one. And we're like, Yeah, yeah, we were. Like, yeah, I meant one after the next one. Not yeah, when I when I said one more, I meant one more than the last one that I'd had, which was more than the other first, than the first one, and the ones after that that I'd had. The explanation always goes down well. Yeah, like, well, I, I've said to Holly though. Like she's like, I wish you just tell the truth, Sam, if you're going out for a few beers. Like, no, no, because when I'm telling you I'm going out for a beer, like that's not a lie because I am convinced that I am just yeah. meeting Gav or whoever for a beer. So it's not a lie because in that moment it is the truth. In like, and then obviously things. Well, I'm sure all of our listeners know what happens, isn't it? You have one more, and then you go, go on, I'll get you another one. Then I'm going, I'm going to have to shoot off, and then Gav's like, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to, oh, I've just got you another one, and then suddenly. It just yeah. snowballs a little we bit. Flavor. We get the flavour and then it's yeah. it's hard to come back there, isn't it? Dangerous. And yeah, and I, like, I wish you just said from the start, and I went, because like, I honestly believed I was just going to have one, but in the end, you know, I've had Genuinely 100. believed it. Yeah, and I'd say, but never mind, Holly, I've brought you back a kebab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, feel, I feel a little bit bad. Talk at night. Yeah, covered, yeah. You've got, and I've got extra garlic sauce, I know you like it. <laughs> I feel a bit bad, Dave, as well, because me and Sam have always been pretty much like this. But you've, since you've retired, you've sort of like been dragged into it a little bit. I feel. 
Yeah, think... new experiences. I don't mind it, to be fair. My problem is I usually live further away than what you two are traveling. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I have to yeah. limit myself. Do you you like Dave now you've retired, isn't it? There's nothing nicer than that Friday. I know I've said I said this to you before you retired. Yeah. That Friday when you've had a busy week, you know, you've you've worked really hard, you've probably done your exercise, you've been like the same as here, you're rushing around trying to get everything sorted. And then you have the Friday and you have that pint of lager or whatever on a Friday night or a glass of wine or whatever it is. It's a lovely, relaxing feeling, isn't it? You, ne- you don't get that as a footballer, do you? No, because even when after a game or something, you're always, then you, your body's going to be sore. You know, it's probably not the right thing to be drinking. When you're younger, you get away with it, do you? But I think drinking when you're younger compared to when you get a little bit older, I'm talking like mid 30s onwards. Just having that one drink is really refreshing, isn't yeah. it? When you're younger, it's like, I'm out, I'm out, I'm drinking loads. But um, <laughs> yeah. it's just sitting down and having a couple of pints in the pub is really nice. Or at home on a Friday night, like you said. Yeah, the simple things in life. I and think that's what... Thing, and especially, I think, when you've been particularly good in the week. When you've been yeah. particularly good in the week, you've got your exercise in, whether it be gym or a walk in the dog or a run or whatever it is, and then you get to the weekend... And I, as a player, I think we've said this before, as a player, I always went through till Saturday night. And then after a game Saturday, I was a bit free for all Sunday, whatever I want. And then impeccably. And now it's just, it's just moved forward a day. I treated myself, yeah, moved, yeah. moved forward a day. And that Friday night, I keep going on about those bottle of gnomes. I tell you, I've just had some more delivered. <laughs> when, Gav, on a Friday night, though, I mean, obviously it's different for you because you're manager, so you don't have to be at the peak of physical fitness, but you're still going to be sharp. You know, you can't, you don't, you're not going to have, you're not going to have eight pints, are you? Well, I don't know, you're going to tell us in a minute. You're not going to have eight pints, are you, and then manage on the Saturday. Do you have, you have a couple? How do you, how do you treat that on that Friday night these days? Steaming. Just get absolutely <laughs> <laughs> just turn just, up half cut. Yeah, can't well, do I, like, I do, the, the I do, yeah. read out twelve players on in your team and all that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah I, I still um, I still turn up to Telford's ground thinking I'm the Telford manager. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I just I just I just do what happens when we go out. Holly will just put, bring me a drink into the uh, into the lounge and just and I'll just say, "Go on, I'll have one more after this one." Yeah. No, no. On, on a serious note, I'm. Um, when I first embarked on management, I actually thought, well, I'm not playing, am I? So I can have a couple of beers. And obviously, it didn't go silly, maybe four or five, six or seven or eight. Um, but yeah, very, very quickly, I realized you're just not sharp. And you have to be sharp. You have to see things in real time. Concentration and focus. Like, is it, like I come back on a Saturday after a game, win, lose or draw, and I'm absolutely spent physically, emotionally, yeah. mentally. I am spent and you you can't do it. So, so no, not really. I'll have a glass of wine with Holly if we have a, a little bit of food on a Friday night. But yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, you have to be sharp. So no, like st- still mean, in that as a player, don't drink really. Yeah, the Friday night. But I suppose you still get, I mean, because we used to have, it used to be a 48 hour rule, I think. I mean, that used to be, I don't know whether that's changed a little bit now and people use their common sense, but we used to have, from Sunderland this was, it, you weren't allowed in licensed premises 48 hours before a game. I don't know if that's still the case. Is that are they a bit more? Yeah, trusting it's still, it's, but it's still it's it was a bit ridiculous. Though, cause, I mean, they were treated like we were treated like kids. You, know, you couldn't be in licensed premises, so I couldn't couldn't go into a restaurant on a Thursday, at, you know, in the in the evening and just have a water with some food. I mean, yeah. it's probably the right thing to do because if I had been on licensed premises four years before, I would have ended up drinking. So it's probably at the just time one. it was probably just fair. one, just one. But, yeah, there may be one more. One more. What? What? <laughs> what this one that, we'll have our, uh, another one. Was was that a rule, Dave? So I think when you you know obviously me and Gav retired a bit before you, was that still a rule up to the end, or, or was it not as explicit as that? You know, forty yeah, hours in a licensed premises, just just be sensible. Obviously, yeah. you look after your own bodies. Yeah, yeah. If you wouldn't have a glass of red wine on a Thursday, and you were in a, a local Italian restaurant. I can't imagine it's the end of the world. No, no, no. It, it was fine. I think it was just an unwritten rule that. Just don't be stupid. Don't really don't drink two days before a game. But you're told that yeah. from all the fitness coaches what you need to be eating and drinking before the game. So maybe that mm-hmm. advanced a little bit. You need to be eating these meals, this amount of carbs, fats, all that sort of stuff for the game. So the thought of then having a beer in the middle of that just wouldn't even enter thinking. But mm-hmm. lads definitely do go to, like, especially at Wolves, the foreign boys, they would eat out a lot. So like even the yeah. day before a game, they go to like a local Italian and stuff course, like that yeah. in Wolverhampton. So that was that. Was I think you I saw Dave in Fumo in Birmingham on a Friday. Um, who was the Portuguese? That um, Neves. 
Yeah. So I see you then. You, I could I could hear this guy at the bar, sat at the bar, because it's almost it's like a nice restaurant, isn't it? And then they've got the bar area that goes around. There's a guy and his missus. He's going, he's got a game tomorrow, eight. And he's like, he's like proper being vocal about it. And I was like, losing my head a bit. I was like, flipping it. He's like, he's like with his missus and kids. Yeah. It's probably like old oh, school mentality, though, isn't it? Family man doesn't drink. He'd be having the healthiest meal ever. And he was going yeah. on, and, and in the end, I was like, "Mate, he's with his kids. It's not like he's out with the lads on the lash, and he's Portuguese. He's probably more interested yeah. in, in espresso than what, what was of... what was he saying? What was he saying when he saw him? <laughs> he was saying, like, and I quote, "He's got a game tomorrow, Aid." They like that, the Welsh, though, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. Anyway, I thought I thought today. I mean, it was a bit last minute because I was I was so busy with like with everything. I thought normally I come up with a bit of an idea of what we're going to talk about. But um, Dave thought it's probably good to mention goal scorers, considering the fact Cristiano Ronaldo, who I know us three have the utmost admiration for, and I know I know he reminds you two a lot of me. So I know that's why he's always say, a top goal scorers is very apt because I used to yeah. get at least six a season. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the same way, he scored nine. Ronaldo scored he scored nine hundred goal career goals, and I thought that's not bad, including training and when, like, when he's playing under nines and that. That's nine hundred professional <laughs> football goals, mate. I, mean, I, don't, I, is, can't even, I can't even comprehend. I can't even get my head around it. Can't even. Yeah, it's hard to register, isn't it? How how funny though in the Euros when I mean. It's Cristiano Ronaldo, isn't it? But he's that big of a like a superstar now. He's just still taking everything, wasn't he? And he just kept on getting the free kicks and he's blasted about four over. And so uh, you can imagine the lads going, you know, to, to Fernandez or something, you should have the next one. He's going, oh, yeah, you, you tell him. Going, gaffer, gaffer, I think someone else should be on free. Oh, no, look, you can tell Cristiano he's not on the next free kick. No, no, you you tell him. It's just like, you can't no, you do. No, you're not taking any more goal kicks. Oh, you tell him. I'm not <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. Unreal. But I mean, that is a formidable um, record. That I mean, I that's his, um, his, his Real Madrid stats. So you think like, okay, well, he's doing it now in Saturday's up. But his Real Madrid stats when he was in his prime, he scored, I think he played like, 208, 209 games, but he scored over 300 goals, so he's more than a goal a game at Real Madrid, That's which mental. is just. I, I mean, I'm a, I haven't got my North, um, I haven't got my um, Northampton st- stats to hand, but I don't think it was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is incredible. So, Dave, talk us through. We know when who was um, some of the best goal scorers you've played with. Um, so, I think. Probably, I was going to think for one of the three best I can think of. Um, are we doing so, that? Are we doing three best? That's a, well, yeah, I'm just three, there's three that stood out for me who were very different goal scorers for different reasons. Um, but they're all my time at Wolves. Um, the first one I came across was Sylvan Banks Blake. So, Gav, you know, because you had a bit of Telford, didn't you? But that was sort yeah. of later in his career. But, he was still, like, he's still ledged, though. I, I used yeah. to love talking to him, yeah. But like a box player, mate. So just get in the box, look to take as as little touches as possible, and get a shot away, and not place it. Just absolute power. Um, and he was very, very good at just being in the right place, at the right time. But every time he just got rolled into him, he'd pin himself against the defender, just get half a yard, then bang. Um, and he used to score. Well. He would just score absolute hatful. Um, and it used to the lad used to get really frustrated because. It was a Mick McCarthy team. Mick bought Silva. And I actually came the day after Silva and we're in the same transfer window. Um, but Mick was all about hard work. Everyone has to put in a shift. Um, but Silva, that wasn't Silva at all. <laughs> and I remember one one game, um, I think somebody was complaining that Silva in training because he wasn't doing anything. Silva would always have a go at people. Like, if you didn't give him the ball, he would scream at you. If you passed him and it was a yard the wrong side, he would give you this death stare, which would just go right through you. Horrible. Um, but he used to just obviously bag loads of goals. And I think, it, I want to say it was Carl Henry sort of got on Sills back in training, like saying, like, stop giving it out. You're not working, all this sort of stuff. But Mick McCarthy pulled him off the train. He's like, can you go easy on Sill, please? And Carl's <laughs> like, what? <laughs> and, um, yeah, Mick was like, look, I know I need 10 workhorses on the pitch, but he is going to win us the games. He's the one who's going to get us promoted. We need to keep him happy, keep him sane, keep him, like, 
amongst the team um and he was telling our captain carl to just <laughs> go easy on him, just to protect him so he wouldn't he wouldn't do much in the game so um but when the ball came in the box i think he had like two or three seasons in the champ where he scored 30 plus goals or although no he's golden boot in the champ for like three years on the bounce i think um wow. so he was he was brilliant from a technical point of view stephen fletcher so obviously went on to he was at burnley wolves sunderland played for scotland still playing at wrexham now from a, a technical point of view he was he was fantastic like his his touch mate was just unbelievable a sweet left foot so he could score all types of goal where silver's a bit more in the box roll and score like that whereas fletch could score from 25 yards unbelievable in the air had this ridiculous leap and header um, and had a real like composed one touch finish one on ones he had the absolute complete package like proper proper player so fletch was was bang up there scored goals for us in the premier league as well and then the last one is just from i've never seen anyone want to score goals as much as this lad and it was adam lafondra do you remember yeah, adam? Yeah, I remember him, yeah. obviously went on and i think he was did really well at red and he's still playing now he's just signed for um fc united um he's been over in australia for quite a few years but in training i've never seen anyone so hungry to score goals you know like when you do the finishing sessions and you'll have your shot the keeper will save it and you'll kind of jog back to the queue mate he would follow everything in keeper push it to the side keeper give up maybe sprint into the ball sliding in tapping it in every single opportunity he had to put the ball in the back of that however much the session session had finished or the goalkeeper had sacked it off or defenders had given up he would just be there mate little tiny tap-ins yeah just relentless and then right he, also, he went and scored an absolute hatful as well throughout his career so wow. when i was thinking about it, they were the three for very very different reasons which which stood out i love that i love that no one shouting a big silve like every, everybody just worked their nuts yeah. off everybody has to give everything no one getting silves back because he's going to win you the game the thing is dave the lads if he does win you the game the lads are the lads are fine aren't they yeah, the, we, yeah. everybody will run around but if you know if you win two one and he scores two you're like Still, you've covered about one and a half K there today, and we're all absolutely <laughs> shattered and like we're cramping up. But he's like, he's like, Sylv's like, you're welcome, lads. There's yeah. your win. I've got your win bonuses sorted out. Go and, get, go and treat your wife to some handbag over the weekend. You're welcome on Sylv, on big Sylv. That is, and it was, he was, um, it was, it was so like that, mate. And he was such a, a funny, funny character as well in the dressing room. He's one of the funniest that I've met, mate. He was, uh, he was a great laugh, but he knew how important he was he knew how good he was and he would just kind of play it perfectly um but yeah you like it's 100 percent true though if you've got a match winning team we had it at walls with um bakary sacco as well left winger yeah. like we used to just tell him not to bother tracking back just like you stay up the pitch we used to play three in midfield and usually me is like the left side of a three in midfield i'll track the right back as well so i'll do all that run in that channel but we win the ball, give it to Sacco, he scores. We win 1 0, and you don't care, do you? I've covered like 14 K, he's I mean, covered about you, 14 meters, and he's won us the you game. Don't, you don't mind. You're going to have your problem you always have. Is... Oh, his signal's gone there, Sam. Oh, not, he's not paid the bills. Sorry, mate. Oh. Not paid the bills, right? I went a bit. <laughs> Come on, go. oh. Do you want I me to um, Gav's yeah. frozen now. What's happening with the internet here? I'm good. I'm good. Here. I'm good. I don't know what's happened there. I'm just transferring you some money to pay that Wi-Fi, oh, Sammy. It's just me then, isn't it? Sorry about that. I don't know what's happened there. Thank you. Just, just a <laughs> two-pound top up, please, to get me to get me through for the next twenty-five minutes. Thanks, for <laughs> Um What about you? What about you, Gav? Um, as as you well know, I'm brilliant preparing for this sort of stuff on the way into. Bracket yeah. Football Club. Um, yeah, thought of anybody. Yeah, the first, the first one I Gary Lineker. Yeah, Gary. Yeah, Gary used to be great. Um, but the first, the first one that ever really made me think about finishing was uh, when I was at Exeter. Darren Robotham. That um, Robo was like I was his boot boy, but he was um, he was at Chelsea, and he was like a real sort of League One, League Two goal scorer. And he's the first, he's the one, and I know you've had people say this as well, Sam, that said, you don't have to smash it. You don't have to smash the ball. You just, have to just roll it in the net. Just roll it in the net. He just to say it all the time. And I, and honestly, like, as a youth team player and then coming through as a pro, like I used to watch him and he was just different. He knew where the goal was. Never, He said, I never look at the goal. There's The six-yard box and the goal never moves. I never look at the goal. Yeah, and he and he would literally be like, "You don't have to smash it. 
All you got to do is just place it, just roll it down the side in the side of the net. And yeah, but then he could score absolute bangers as well. So he's he's the first one that got me thinking, flipping it. Yeah, like that's uh, finishing is an art. I think it, like for me, obviously, he's a dopey player. You just run in and try and smash it as hard as you can, low and hard in the corner. He's the first one that got me thinking, not that I needed it, but thinking what finishing was, that it was actually a skill. Uh, so he was the first one. I'd say when you talk about skill and, and all-round finishing, I know I've brought it up before, but I, I honestly, I always go back to Symesy, Michael Symes. I always go back to him. And like he was the only one in training who could score against Joe. And he was just he, he just an array of, like, he could score from everywhere. Um, he would go and smash it and just dink it. He would go to dink it and smash it. He just, he had everything from every angle with both feet. Again, never really look at the goal. And he was one of them as well that you'd be showing wide. And as the ball was sort of dropping and you think he'd try and hit it on the half volley, he'd hit it before it hit the ground. So you didn't really have time to get a block off. So we always just hit the ball really early. And he's like I say, it came from everywhere. Headers, like both feet, really technical. Real, like Probably like what you were saying about Stephen Fletcher there. Um, Dave, he was he was one in training. I used to think, oh my god, you must have scored a hundred goals already. Yeah. Um, is, it is that natural, Gav? Do you think? Are you born with a little bit of that ability? I mean, I was at just a, so much. I mean, obviously, it's a lot of hard work practicing. But is it a natural thing, or you know, to know where to be in the box, to be a good finisher, to anticipate? You know, the technique's obviously not natural. Is it that comes with practice? But I don't know. Is it something about? Is there something about instinct and? But well, the one, I'm going to go on to, the one I'm going to go on to is definitely just natural. Um, but when you talk about Symesy, I don't think you can yeah. teach that per se. I think there's an instinct there. Like you say, as the ball's falling and you're expecting to hit it on the half volley, he hits it before it hits the ground. So you're anticipating to get a block off. So your stride's taking you right now. As he hits it on that half volley, I'm going to get my leg out. I'm going to make sure I get a block off. He's already hit it. There's nothing you can do about it. And he's like, I do just think there is, an, and when you're talking about you know, Sylv and people like that, Davis. I just think they have a, a natural desire, a natural instinct. Of course, you've got to work on it. You know, I, I think there's absolutely a case for that as well. But I just think some of these lads are just born naturally. The, the third one I was going to go on and speak about was any anyone who knows non-Lee will know Lee Boylan. Lee Boylan around the time I was playing. Um, Boyles. Boise, yeah. Um, <laughs> busy, we used to call him. And we used to say to him, stay out the build-up. Honestly, stay out the build-up because it used to be like, oh, bouncing off him everywhere and it was a nightmare but honestly mate I, he, he's a li probably a little bit like Adam LaFondra like what you were saying there Dave but if it was almost like a kid on a playground and he would score 50 goals a season honestly he was, he was up to like 40 50 goals a season like in a conference and it was ridiculous and he would try and shoot from everywhere and it was infuriating but but you just knew that he had he could score from 25 yards out from five yards out he could he could tackle the ball in the net he could head it. He could hit it with both feet. And he just, he caught, I think he caught about four years where he was hitting 40, 50 goals a season. And he was absolutely electric. And you again, we moved into the league. He had a couple of, so he started at West Ham and he, he did really, really well at West Ham. Um, and was right, a, a little bit like a lot of players, isn't it? Like, you know, those ones coming through that Harry Redknapp probably had, you know, where they're on the periphery and, I think Harry Redknapp spoke about Sean Cannon before and, and Bertie Braley and a few of those lads that were right on the verge of the first team, not quite getting there. I think Busy was in and around that. And then he's, he, he, he's a bit of a homeboy, so ended up moving closer to home, and but just hit the ground running. And yeah, like I say, I, th I think he had opportunities. I think what he did like a few quid though, and I think non-league paid him a lot of money. I think he was probably one of the highest paid, like a bit of a Daryl Clare. You know, he's like probably should have been playing in the league, but was picking up a lot of money um, and able to do other things. So, yeah, just ridiculously natural instinct could score from every angle, from every distance, header, both feet. Yeah, but but didn't have a lot else. So you'd have to be really patient with him and you'd win the game 2 3 nil, and he'd have two or three. He would be the goal scorer, but he wouldn't have really brought a lot else to the game. I'm not, you know, listening to that, he'd probably go crazy saying, you know, he offered a lot, but I just felt like, he was just an incredible finisher. And then it always makes you think, doesn't it? Because you can understand why some people don't play higher, maybe because they're not fast enough, they're not fit enough, they're not strong enough, they're not technically good enough. But if you're a goal scorer and you're not and you're not relaxed, you're not like particularly good in the build up anyway, you wonder if you can just transfer that skill of being in the right place at the right time, like in the higher leagues, wouldn't you? Because you know, if you if you're not relying on your technique or something, you'd think. 
You don't, you don't score 30, 40, 50 goals in, in the conference if, you, if you're not able to step up. That's like, what I mean, but, yeah, but well... But, I think yeah, he was a big no. fish in a small pond. I think he was... I think money was just crazy for him. And I think that, that was... I feel like that's the, um, I feel that's, that, that's the one position on the pitch, if you're that type of player as well, who's a goal scorer, that could just go through the leagues because yeah. you're going to get better chances on better that pitches players, better players yeah. around you. Whereas for a central midfielder, if you're, if you're, I don't know, really good in non-league, the step up in athleticism and how you're going to get pressed and all that sort of stuff is a lot different to that goal scorer who's just trying to find half a yard in the box. And like, yeah. it's, exactly. You know, if you think if he, you're going to play centre forward for Man City and De Bruyne is bouncing them off your head, I, I, I fancy yeah. myself. I fancy myself. And what, what, did, what did Haaland get? 50 goals in the season. I'd fancy myself I'd fancy myself to get one. It's <laughs> generous. Definitely. A bit ambitious. <laughs> a bit of penalty, maybe. What about what about you then, Sam? Which what would you like, say your top three would be? Top of, top of the shop by a million miles, Kevin Phillips. Yeah. For me, like you know, he he come to Sunland, um, and we were like from Watford, and we were like, who's this? Who's this lad? Yeah, like. It looks terrible. They're like doing all the little five sides and that. I was like, mm, what? What's that? What's that new forward? Like everyone's like, you know, nothing. But then he does just nick a few goals, but then you know, like little side footers and stuff, wouldn't it? And then suddenly he just sort of he got in the team. Obviously, he played up front with Niall Quinn. They talk about needing a good partner as well. And that Quinn Phillips combination was absolutely electric. And I think Kev Phillips would probably say what he wasn't wouldn't have been quite the same without Niall Quinn. But it just worked perfectly. But just scored in training yeah. all the time. Just kept scoring. And you're thinking, like, how, why is he just scoring? Why is the ball landing to him? Why is he hit? How's he hit that? And that's gone in because I've just hit, I've been in the same position and hit it. Mine's mine's gone into ro- like row X. But you just you know, if you're doing five sides as well, and you'd be thinking it's all right. Even playing against him, you'd be like, I'm all right. I'm not, like I'm fine. I can play against Kev if it was one on one. I'd be like, yeah, no problem. Just constantly scoring the all different kinds of goals. It's like that, you know, and it's just they like, couldn't really explain why he was sharp, good shot, you know, pretty good at everything, but not exceptional at anything. But just like a knack, weird, strange thing, isn't it? What how do you how do you become such a good goal scorer? Um he was he was like by far the best. By far the best. Do you think the um, the main thing is just that calmness in the box? Do you know what I mean? Because everyone can hit a good ball, everyone can put it in the corner with technique, but it's those big moments where yeah. your heart starts to bite, beat a little bit faster. It's a big moment in the game, but the best strikers they just go cold, don't they? Cool, so ice yeah. in the veins, just go cold and just bam. Yeah, I think I think he probably was like. I mean, he smashed a few in as well. But yeah, he did. He did. You know, he, he did finish the ball really well sometimes, and you thought, "Wow, better, you know, fair play." Someone it, it was like who didn't, who didn't just, he didn't always just blast them as well. And so he would say the same. Like, you don't always need to blast them. I mean, just like roll some in the corners. Then he he did blast a few as well. I don't know. They're just fascinating those sort of players, aren't they? I remember even like Ryan Lowe. I mean, he wasn't Ryan Lowe was an yeah, amazing was finisher, and he would just get like half a yard just on the edge of the box and just do the little bend into the corners. Like Guerrero had that one, didn't side, they? Side footers and just side foot them in. You know, you just you just come in like just half a yard and just bend them into the goal. And you think like, oof, you know, just do that all the time. Like a lovely finish. And he didn't practice that, but just really calm in the box again. Someone else, Ryan. Ryan who played as he got older. When he was 24, 25, 26, he wasn't doing amazing, but he was still playing when he was 34, 35, and he actually got his best seasons and most goals most money when he was in his 30s because he wasn't relying on speed or anything he was he was just still he was a more intelligent player and he would just find half a yard and finish all the time really calm yeah. another one another one I mentioned Chris Greenacre can you remember him or was it oh, family with him Chris Greenacre he's just oh, yeah. another one scored all the time and he, he would even laugh about himself I'm like he's not quick not strong He's not amazing in the air. He hasn't got an amazing shot. He's not good at dribbling. I was just like, I'm not really, <laughs> not really sure why this lad's any good at football. Then he'd score your 25 goals a season, and all the Tramia fans, he'd sing, We all dream of a team of green acres. Like, 
<laughs> that was good. The team of Greenacres would be absolutely terrible, but we've got one of them, and he's our most valuable player because he's our centre forward and scores all the goals. Yeah. They're frustrating sometimes, aren't they? Those players, like you, like they are, they, they need to win you the game, don't they? Because if they're yeah. not scoring, if they have, <laughs> if there's goal scorers like say Sylvan Blakes and all them, if they if they're not scoring for three or four games, like you're losing your head with them, aren't you? It's like you say, though, Dave, you'd nothing. have been doing all that running for Sacco, and, um, or Saka, sorry, and he's, like, doing hardly anything. And as you walk out, you know, everybody's wanting his autograph and you're just ch- jumping oh, yeah. straight to the coach going, fucking, like, it's unbelievable, yeah. isn't it? They've just got something. Yeah, he got signed by Crystal Palace. For ridiculous <laughs> money, mate. <laughs> when we was at Wolves. Take when me I with you. Take me with you. <laughs> you. You weren't a bad finisher, though, Dave, were you? I know you're, like... You like Work, worked on it, game. mate. Worked on it massively. Yeah. It wasn't, wasn't natural to me. When I was younger, I was very erratic in front of goal. Like, yeah. I didn't have that calmness at all. Um, but as you got older, yeah, so what did I you went. do? Tell me how you practiced them. Because when I remember when you were older, you like you slotted in a few, didn't you? A few side footers yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I was, yeah, I feel like I was really clinical, sort of back end of my career. Right, um, really clinical pushing it. I said you were decent at finishing. Nah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, um, I, I never used to work on it that much, really, in, in training and that. And it was more I wouldn't work on the type of finishes that I was getting. So I would do the one where I'll do a finishing session, you clip me the ball on the edge of the box, and then I'll take a touch and hit it. I scored one goal from outside the box in my whole career. So like it's the wrong thing to be practicing. So it's a bit more tailored, um, and that's what I did. I started practicing those one-touch finishes, off crosses in particular. Um, I spoke a lot to goalkeepers about, where they didn't like saving it. So when a cross comes in from, say, the right-hand side, where is your worst place to get the ball? And I've noticed quite quickly that it's back where it came from, so near post. Goalkeepers are shuffling across their goal as a cross comes in. So I used to try and, especially if it was with my feet, I'd go straight back in that corner. And that repetition, I'd practice all the time, just side foot finishes, don't need to spend any pace on it. Um, and then my head in, mate. I practiced loads of my head in. Like, every single day after training, I'd have sort of probably 20 balls from each side coming in, practicing different types of headers. And that's, yeah, then that's that. And then when it came into a game, it just felt like it was the muscle memory was there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so you'd have young lads like right and left wing, obviously, and just see it, right? And you just, you start running into the box and they would just try and cross it and you would just try and time it all the time, hitting the, hitting the ball and directing your headers back where it's come from a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah, it was it was quite simple. I said, just get someone to do it. It was usually, to be fair, especially towards the end, it was Connor Cody, mate, used to do it all the time. He'd be like, Edo, off we go. And he would just come and he'd just clip balls in for me at the end of training. But I would just put like a mannequin in the middle of the box and I'd just make a double movement off it. So I'd kind of, I'd always score my headers sort of 99 times out of 100 across the man. So I'd kind of make a move behind the mannequin and then dart across, if that makes sense, and then try and get a glance and header. That was the one I kept working on all the time. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, just just came in. But again, it's just repetition, like making sure that it wasn't so much the volume at the end. As I was getting better and better, it was like, right, I need five good headers here. If I have five good headers out of six or seven, then, yeah, I've done enough. Do you know what I mean? But if I'm heading it everywhere, then my time is off. So I just need yeah. to be in rhythm with it all. But, yeah, just hard work. Just focus training more than anything else. Focus training. Work smart. So obviously working hard really important, but working smarter yeah. as well. Yeah, I said about that quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you have another one, Sam, or was that three? Um, well, Kev Phillips, Chris Greenacre. Oh, I, don't know. I mean, I mentioned Ryan as an excellent finisher. I mean, I was saying some people who scored a lot of goals who I played with, say someone like Scott McLeish. It was it was all different kinds. Luke Rogers scored a lot of goals. To be honest, I mean he would he would just blast, <laughs> <laughs> he would blast everything. If you ever tried to side foot it, it would hit the corner flag. He's just better off just blasting it. And sometimes it broke the net. Sometimes it went over. Sometimes it went over the bar. I mean, like you've seen a lot of him, Dave, as well, wouldn't you? But keepers that, used to that, away of it, didn't they? <laughs> Massive down the middle of the keeper's die. <laughs> I'm not going to break my finger. A bit like that Shearer method, though, isn't it? You know, you yeah. strike the ball and you and you don't want to hit the ball too well sometimes. So you know, you see a lot of these like 25 yarders and 30 yarders, they get hit, but they often like bend away a little bit, don't they? Or they, they you know if you sometimes if you hit it too well, like Luke would smash it. If you hit it too well and catch it cleanly, which fortunately Luke didn't always do, like it just goes straight into the keeper's hands, like cherries. But yeah. a lot of the time, you know, it comes off the side of the foot, the inside of the foot, so it doesn't it blasts in other areas. But yeah, so what are you thinking for um like away from people we play with? 
best finishers. Who stands out out of well, your time from watching football from what say the nineties onwards? I mean, I'd say she would, but I wouldn't say she was. You know, it's ridiculous to say he wasn't an amazing finisher. He scored like two hundred and fifty Premier League goals, but he wasn't someone who would who would like you would see as someone sliding the ball and you know like a Van Nistelrooy or someone like that. Like I don't know someone who you'd think of as a classic good. For, even like Gary Lineker, I would see more as like getting on the end of things. Someone, you know, I'm thinking of someone who's really calm, who slots the ball into the corners. Yeah. I don't know. It's all different types. Because Lin- harsh, really. I, I always saw Shearer as that person that would score all different types of goals, was willing to slide yeah. it into the corner. Yeah. Just all types of goals. Like, I just, you'd never, you'd never be, I remember once, um, Sam, well, you were out having a beer and I'd scored and it come up on Sky and Sam had put, he sent me a text saying, yes, um, what, what was your goal like? And I put, oh, yeah, so I picked it up deep in my own half. Um, and as I've got it out of my feet, started dribbling, and Peter Reed's come towards me. So I've just nudged it past him, gone past Steve Hodge, this big lad, um, Terry, okay. near me, gone past him. And then this, is it Skilton or Simpson or someone, the keeper? He's come out, and I've rounded him and just slotted it in and run off. And, <laughs> and he just put, I, I took all this time after the game on the coach because I was so buzzing. And then Sam just put header, question mark, and I just put, yeah. So it's like people like me, you knew it was a header, but like people like your shearers and that, yeah, anything or outside of the foot or a back heel or 35 yard volley, you just would you, you wouldn't if Shearer would have texted you that, you'd have just gone, Oh, yeah, probably did do that. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll also, we'll, we'll, um, we'll ask, we'll ask our listeners as well. I'll tell you who was one who, sorry, if I should have mentioned who we need to mention is probably off the top of my head. I can't think of anybody better, Thierry Henry. Mm. That for, that in, calm, for that calmness you're talking the about. Calmness, the calmness, the ice yeah. cold slot. Slotsville. Yeah. Yeah. Slot he even knew where he was going every time, but he just couldn't get there. Didn't How did he? he get there? Who, 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 who were you thinking of like I, I felt like Thierry Henry, like he's, he's that person. When he used to, he was alien like. Like you would stand there with your mouth open going, has he thought about doing that? Or has that happened? Like, what, how, has he, he, why, how has that even come around? He's just literally slotted it. And the goalkeeper's like, just can't even move. And it's slotted in the bottom corner. Just he's, crazy. He was so sharp when it rained, he didn't even get wet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you who I liked as well, Ian Rush. I always used to like, growing up, I used to watch yeah. Ian Rush. I always used to think he was a very, very good finisher. Ian Wright. Yeah. Ian oh, Wright. Wright. Right. Joe. What what about who, who, little dink, two dinks over the head and then the little side foot lob. Do you remember that one when Arsenal... Highbury, yeah. it was at Highbury, and they were having that that end. The stand was being redone, so yeah, they just looked terrible. Yeah, but I think he it was Sheffield Wednesday played against, and he dinked in one way, dinked him back over the other, and then a little side foot, like yeah. chip, brilliant. Yeah, from um, from prem, from the Premier League era, I was kind of thinking about this, and the two which really stood out for me, who just are like unapologetic goal scorer. So it's not like the Thierry on me, the nice and just two just love scoring goals and they'll be selfish and they will just make sure their name's on the, the score sheet. That's all that matters. One of those players who don't care if they win, but if they lost 4-3, but they score three, they're happy. <laughs> I mean, those sorts of players. Come in the dressing room later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I think Rude Van Nistelrooy, I think as a yeah. box player, I thought he was yeah. brilliant. Um, just comes yeah. alive in the box, little one-touch finishes, one-on-ones. Great. I don't think he ever scored outside the box, did he? Just, yeah, he won those players. Very always, rare. Yeah, always at the target. And then more recently, Harry Kane. I think he is like an elite, an elite, elite finisher. Like, ridiculously yeah. good. When you look at his finishes, the ones where he whips them back across the keeper. And like, he has like a, a bit like Ronaldo in a way. You know, he just wants to score goals. Like, yeah. so you never see Kane pass, do you? Like in the box and that very rarely no. he tries to set someone up. He's trying to score himself. And as as the game goes on, he starts to shoot from further and further away and all those sorts of things. But I think that he is like the closest thing there's been to Shearer in terms of all types of goals. But mm. he probably less of a team player than Shearer. He um if less, you go- less of a team player than Shearer. I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily know that because <laughs> Shearer would shoot from everywhere. Shearer would shoot from a corner. Yeah, well. I suppose I didn't probably. Yeah, I yeah, probably well, yeah. I suppose she, you know, because she would work really hard for the team. I suppose so that's probably well. Yeah, fair. I think the centre forwards are selfish, one that you have to have that mindset. And I think the lads accept that a little bit. You know yeah. that they are going to be a little bit selfish, and they're not going to pass. 
you know, sometimes people just wouldn't wouldn't pass, would they? They would be selfish. I've played with players like that. Luke, Luke wouldn't pass. Luke Rogers wouldn't pass. Yeah, he'd, just, he'd, he'd have a shot from everywhere, and you'd just be like, "All oh, right, well, he's not." He didn't it was hard though, wasn't it? Because you'd be infuriated, but you just knew one in three would end up in the yeah. corner. So and, it was well, he hard. would he would he would say, "If I shoot from this ridiculous angle, Sam, there's a five percent chance I'll score. If I pass to you, there's a no zero percent chance you'll score. So I'm just going to I'm going to play the odds." Brilliant. <laughs> and then like and then like we'd win the game anyway afterwards, and if we'd won like. One nil or something, and Luke scored. He just scored. You're welcome, everyone. You're welcome. <laughs> Don't worry. Night drinks on Luke tonight, everybody. You're welcome. And he's what the dressing room. See you later, lads. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Class. Yeah. Uh, strikers. Anyone, take, all, anyone, take all the money as well, didn't they? Oh, they did. Yeah, well, yeah, they, that's the standard. You'll you know that, obviously, Gav, um, Gav as a manager, like more than we will as just being players. Do you find when you're recruiting that strikers are always pay the most? Yeah, obviously, depending on the striker, but if they're proven and if you know you're just going to get goals yeah. out of them, yeah, they're just invariably, they're the ones that are commanding more. But, you know, your starting points are higher. You're starting. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, if you, like, everybody needs them, don't they? Everybody needs goals. Like, it's desperate. You know, all the teams. Teams need goals to stay up. You look at the teams at the bottom of the league, they're all going to struggle to score goals. Yeah. Do you know, do you know, the, fascinating, do you, do you know the positions that fascinate me? Like, you've got your strikers, haven't you? That you just like that's what they're there for. We're still, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about that. We're still talking football. Roy, Roy, Roy Keane would say, wouldn't he, that you know it's their job and all of this. The one that fascinate, fascinates me, and you, one you relate to, Dave, um, is like them, them ones who play in midfield but just score as much as a striker, like a Frank Lampard. Lampard, he's, my, he's like the goat for me, mate. I he, love he, always he just really absolutely needed. fascinated me how, you know, the strikers are there to score goals. As a midfielder, you'd like to chip in. If you can get double figures, brilliant. But to score, to be in the top three goal scorers of the league, year in and year out for 10 years, it, yeah, like, it just baffles. 20th, 20th season, man, wasn't he, Lampard? Crazy, mate. Absolutely. Now you model yourself a bit on, Dave. That's like, you know, if, you're, if I had to compare you to a Premier League player, like I, I would say Lampard. Yeah, I had a, I had a DVD of every single one of his Chelsea goals that I used to watch on the way to games. I like, I, I, I just thought the way it was the way he played. I just thought it was incredible. I'd watch it the night before a game, and I'd watch it again the day. Again, all types of goals. I just <laughs> like stalker. <laughs> but I can um, compare you to a Premier League player from back in the day, John Jensen. Yeah, I'm comparing you to Francis Benali. With his muzzy. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get in there early. Sorry, Dave. Yeah. No, he was I'm he comparing was... you. Sorry, I'm comparing I'm comparing I'm comparing you to um I'm Mark comparing Wright. You to Liam, Ma- I'm comparing Liam. you to Mark Wright and not the good looking one off the only I'm, way I'm comparing you to Liam Brady. <laughs> <laughs> I take that same left. But sorry, Dave, we're getting distracted. Go on, Dave, carry on. No, I think I mean, <laughs> that was it. I said, yeah, I didn't. He used to score some bangers as well, didn't he? That yeah. was never really my repertoire. But like, he used to score so many scruffy goals, and it was always like the second phase where he's arriving, and then yeah. defenders haven't quite cleared it, and he just arrives, bam, penalty spot, scuffs it into the floor, goes into the bottom corner. Yeah, he's there all the time. Always, right? always, remember, always remember that story as well when, like, Harry Redknapp. Um, oh, brilliant! Was yeah. about him yeah. And he was like, he said, "Oh, yeah, you're not the quickest." And he went out and bought spikes, and he was like every day sprinting. And then they were like, "Yeah, we think you might be a little bit overweight." And he was just literally with the bin, old school bin liner, running around the training ground at West Ham. And then it was like, "Yeah, we're not sure about your finish." And then he literally said, "Like he was the one." All the lads would have gone home, and he's still on the training ground. And when you think of the peer pressure back then, we've spoken about it previously. When you think about that peer pressure, and you think about the old school lads who, you know, shooting off to get down the pub if they've got the day off the next day, and like he's just his work ethic and his dedication, and commitment, just. Mate, mate, it's, it's it's great to see them outcomes in it when someone's as dedicated as that. He would never, he, he would never, never been a star, would he? Do you know what I mean? No. As a kid, he would have never been like the the massive standout. And you saw about Harry Redknapp. You must have both seen him where he did that um, sort of press yeah. conference yeah. thing when he's yeah. at West Ham, and they were kind of saying, yeah. basically, you're only playing him because you're related. And he gets up and says, yeah. "I tell you what, this kid is going to the very yeah. top." And that's when he yeah. was. 
Goosebumps. We'll, have to, put that clip, we'll yeah. have to put that clip out. They said he's not better than such and such. Some lad who obviously we haven't yeah. even heard he's, of. He's so not better, better than Scotty Cannon, and he's like, wow, yeah. he absolutely is. I'll tell you now, yeah. what he will achieve in a game won't be yeah. compared to what he achieves in a game. Instead, he goes, you go to the top, and when I say the top, I mean the very, very top. Which yeah, so, yeah. He did no like, football. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Fortune teller stuff. That amazing. Yeah. Right, yeah. believe in him, didn't he? And he's and he seen the work ethic. So you saw yeah. a bit of talent there, but you saw more than anything the work ethic, the desire, the determination. He will go right oh, to the top. Is another yeah. impression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, that was that was good. Any, are you happy with that, then, lads? All good. Yeah. I tell you, what, well done to you. With that one. Well done to you, Gav, for getting. Well done to you, Gav, for getting. Gav. <laughs> oh no, you not very good. <laughs> go on. Well you done. Go on again. She finished it off, Gav. I just want to say well done to Gav. <laughs> just want to say yeah. well done to Gav <laughs> hey, for, for getting through that because it must be it's been difficult for him to breathe and swallow because of how tight that turtleneck is that he's got on there. <laughs> well done to Gav, and he hasn't had much time. He's still, he's still in. Has anyone seen he's Sandra? Still in, in he's still in his, you know, he's been rummaging through my wardrobe. Let's, let's be honest. He's still in his drum shoot from parachute. It's just my club is a bit baggy on, Sam. That's the only problem. <laughs> so, um, Anyway, if, if um if Gav's down at Brackley, then if someone give Gav give fifteen minutes because he's got training, and he needs some help to get out of that track suit. He's got training in fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> got some. Good, Gav. You look good, look good, Gav. You look very smart. Out Thank of the you, podcast, mate. you're definitely in the top three. Thank you, mate. Right, and um, that'll be the absolute last time we're on Streamyard. So say bye to Streamyard <laughs> and let's, yeah. let's remove yeah. Streamyard from your vocabulary. Literally, yeah, like, that's the last time. We'll have one more, and then that is it. No more <laughs> that. It's like it's like when the word furlough after COVID and everything just appeared, like no one ever heard the word, and that's all you hear then for the next six months. It's like all we've been yeah. talking about the stream yard is this little duck in the corner, isn't it? Which is just like a, just been constant in my life not, for the last three weeks. Let's talk about you, Dave. That is it. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, sorry, that's Dave. Sorry, he's got mixed up there. Yeah, <laughs> just saw like just saw a long neck and a big. Right, I've got to go training. Anyway. Great to. Speak to you, gentlemen. All right, all the best, all the best getting out of that card again. Cheers, mate. Look how tight it is on the bicep. <laughs> Have a good one. Love to right. all. Yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks, Cheers, everyone. See you. See you on StreamYard for the next three weeks. Take care. <laughs>